slow poker. I have a career and a family, but also play poker, which doesn't leave me much time. So let's get to it. I've got fives on the button, and a bodybuilder with massive arms who could easily deadlift my entire family without breaking a sweat raises to 20 from under the gun. Cutoff calls and I call, and maybe under the gun can bench 240, but I can flop 555. Under the gun leads here for 75. And while I normally fast play monsters, I've got a pretty good sense of this guy's range and style, and I'm pretty sure he's only got a jack and not a draw. So I flap. The turn coordinates the board a little bit more, and he checks. I bet 100, and he snap calls. If he had flopped two pair, I'm confident all the money would be in the middle by now, and he's only snap calling here if he turned outs. Given his penchant for king jack, my sense is that among the river cards I don't want to see are this, 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 or this. Or if he's got queen jack, then I don't want to see this, 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 or this, 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 or this. Or if he's got jack 10, I'd rather avoid this, 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 or this. And among the river cards I prefer are this, 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 or one of these. I think that covers everything. Oh, no. That covers everything. He checks, I bet 200, and he folds king jack. Hey listen man, you've got some great biceps over there, but today is not your day, it's my day. Because it's leg day. The next exercise is to strengthen your quadriceps or thigh muscles. Then you're going to straighten uh, your right leg out so that your knee is as straight as it can go. I'm in the low jack with 4x chromosomes, raised to 15, and get called by the button and small blind. On a good flop for queens, small blind checks, I bet 20, and both players call. The turn's a blank, small blind checks, I bet 50, and button calls. This river's only bad if he's been calling with jack 10, but I've got him on ace jack, and figure ace jack will snap call 75, and he snap calls 75. Okay, you know the rules. I assume he had ace jack and politely ask if he'll confirm for the vlog. He declines, which is his prerogative, but by rule it does mean I get to decide his whole cards. Alright, let's see what you called with. Pocket your grandma's pound cake recipe cards? Oh, come on, have a little self-respect and fold that preflop. Those cakes are below average at best. I've got ace queen in the hijack, and after a straddle and two limps, I raise to 50, and since I've been folding preflop for an hour, everyone mucks. Because when you're a folding station, they all assume you've got pocket royal flush. A couple hands later, I've got King Jack suited, raise over a straddle to 30, but this time, instead of a fold vest, I get a whopping three callers, which means I'll need to flop something nice. I'm pretty nice. Everyone checks to me, and I bet fairly large given one of these three has to have some piece of this, but much to my surprise, they all fold. Of course, I'm probably naive to assume everyone's playing premiums. Those cakes are below average at best. A few hands later, I've got Jack Jack in middle position, raised to 30 over a button straddle, and get called by the low jack. The flop's incredible. I bet 40, he calls. On a brick turn, I bet 90, and he folds pocket 10s. Maybe he put me on Ace King and hoped I'd slow down, plus he did have insurance in the Gutshot 9. Regardless of your financial circumstances, or pre-existing conditions, or your wafer-thin equity on the turn, the Gutshot 9 is there for you. We're just a phone call away, at the ready with a helping hand, or at the very least an unlikely suck out. Do you like playing Ace King? Roll the tape. And now, Slow Poker presents... Okay, AK. Okay. I've got Big Slick raised to 30 over a button straddle, and the straddler 3 bets to 125. I almost 4 bet, but since I don't yet have a dossier on this player, I flat. The flop looks pretty good for Ace King. I check, and the button bets 130. I'm this close to check raising, but I'm not necessarily ahead, and maybe he'll slow down on the turn. Also, I'm finding it hard to concentrate, as a nearby tournament player simply cannot stop expressing his humble gratitude to the Japanese poker gods. <laughs> So I call. This turn is not my friend. Ace Queen is such a common preflop 3 bet hand, and that just got there. I check, he bets 190, and I call. After an inconsequential river, I check, and he jams. Now I'm deep in the tank, not only weighing whether to call or fold, but also regretting how I played this entire hand. While the card wizards at Red Chip Poker are actually okay with how I played all streets up to now, noting that a preflop 4 bet and a post flop check raise are optional, but flats are equally fine, they also feel a river call is correct from both a GTO and exploitative perspective, and due to the relatively low SPR. But I can't get out of my head that it feels too likely that the button 4 out of me on the turn. And while it's only later that I discover this player to be the airballist of airballers, I reluctantly muck. The button flashes a queen, which is the perfect card to send me into a tailspin. Because while I'll never know if I was good on the river, I'll always know I was good on the flop. Eh. Retake the betting lead pre-flop or on the flop. I'm under the gun with Ace King, and after big blind flats the button straddle, I raise to 40, and the straddler calls. On a great flop, I lead for 35, expecting a quick fold, but button pauses for a moment and calls. It's always a crapshoot why people call here. He could be a non-believer, he could be floating with evil intentions on future streets, he could have a middling pocket pair praying for a two-outer, or he could just have a terrible ace, or he forgot his glasses and his fours just look like aces. Regardless, on this turn, I bet 75 and he folds. Fine. Flop quads. That was easy. I've got ace-king in the small blind, and after two limps, and a button raised to 15, I three-bet to 60, and the button calls. Flop looks good, I bet 65, he calls. Turn's probably fine too, so... All in. Well, mathematically speaking, it's not that I got lucky, it's that you didn't get lucky. And semantically speaking, the one relying on luck tends to be the one who says, ah, fuck it. Well, technically, you were the... ah, fuck it. Chef's kiss. Just hold every time. A real man makes his own luck. 
I've got Ace-King on the button, and after three limps and a cutoff raise to 20, I three bet to 100, and the hijack short stack limp back shoves for 135. As everyone else folds, Lojack Limper looks right at me, and while loudly chewing gum, chimes in with some observant commentary. Thank you, somebody had to say it. I've been three betting all night with seven deuce, and boy oh boy, I finally got my hand caught in the cookie jar this time. But anyway, now I've got a decision. While a few of my viewers point out that I have a tendency to overfold, it is important to approach all these choices mathematically. Here I'm getting around eight to one on a call, which means I need to be good 11% of the time. Given I blocked pocket aces and kings, chances are hijack's got a mid-sized pocket pair, so if I'm trusting the math, it's a call. But I can't get that cerebral observation out of my head. Was this a misstep? Clearly I'm getting out of line with a marginal ace king, so should I just give up the charade here and save my $35? In the end, I get gun shy and decide it's the prudent move to fold, so I pick up my cards to toss them into the muck, and oh no, I slip on a banana peel and accidentally snap call. Look at that, I'm such a klutz. Whoops. The runout looks pretty good for ace king, but then I notice hijack either laughing, convulsing, or silently twerking, and realize she either flopped the set, is dying, or both. The hijack, who had sat down an hour ago with nothing but a short stack and a crossword puzzle, now leaves the table with my chips. And I should tell her, don't sit down for an hour with a short stack and limp back shove when your chances against a cold 3 bet are at best 50-ish percent and at worst 19%. You're not wisely valuing your time or your odds. Just spend 10 seconds with one spin at the roulette table and you're getting far better value. Or for more reliable returns, consider index funds. Also, don't laugh as you win a coin flip like you're some master strategist who played me like a fiddle. Oh, and don't hit and run. It's a really bad look. But instead of delivering these first-rate nuggets of sage advice, I serve up the two vilest words a poker player can utter. That's it. I'm a monster. Correctly. Be mindful of hazards. Oops, you made a mistake, that's all. I've got ace-king in the big blind. Everyone folds to the button, who limps. I raise to 30, and his hand is garbage enough for 5, but just slightly less garbage for 30. But either way, we can all agree, definitely garbage. On this flop, I see bet 25, and he calls. Then I promptly abandon my plan to keep applying pressure, knowing full well my cowardice will just lead to losing to some terrible 3 outer trash hand. And I lose to some terrible 3 outer trash hand. <laughs> Terribly. Keep barreling. You're worthless and weak! You do nothing! You are nothing! I've got his king in the big blind, and as is so often the case when you're in the big blind with a monster, everyone folds to the small blind. The entire table had been chopping the blinds all night, so I assumed a standard chop it up position. But then this happens. Option. Is that a... Is Heads that up. A, is that a raise? It's a call. Cool. It's a call? Oh. I try and suss out whether small blind wants to run it out, but he just ignores me. And this puts me in an awkward position. For those who don't know, when everyone folds all the way to the blinds, there's an unwritten rule that regardless of your holdings, if everyone's been chopping the blinds, you chop the blinds. Namely, both players fold, take back their blinds, and the casino doesn't take the rake. There's also an unwritten rule that if one or both players has a tasty hand, something that can result in a high hand bonus, that the players could mutually agree to simply see the full board, check it down, and see what happens. As an illustration, here's a deleted scene from episode 5. <laughs> Up. We like check it down and like I hit something. Uh, sure, dollar. fine, call. Check. 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 I got a king. Oh, wow. Sure, it stings to waste rockets, but etiquette is etiquette. I didn't feature this hand because chops are boring. They're the dictionary definition of unremarkable. They happen multiple times a session, without fanfare, and everyone moves on. And my first time at a casino, I didn't know this, but this guy had been chopping all night, was twice my age, and a reg. This was not his first chop rodeo. But I've got a premium, and I'm not just going to check my option. So I raised to 35, and he limp back raises to 135. Okay, I saw this same player limp back raise earlier with 10s, and he got torched by queens. And while I personally don't limp back raise, it's perfectly acceptable. But while in violation of the unanimous chop, sorry, but that's just really bad form. And while I could just flat call, knowing he surely got tens, jacks, or queens, and that any flopped ace or king should mean I'm golden. I'm so irate at the way he's handled this whole situation. I quickly decide that the poker gods know a sin when they see one, and I'll just let them smite accordingly. All in. All in? Yeah. Cool. Small blind slams his queens on the table, as if I've somehow wronged him, or that it's some kind of bad beat and not the equivalent of screaming, Come on, Tails! Great. Keep serving justice. Oh, you get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! And that'll do it for episode 7 of Slow Poker. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, and comment below. And from the Slow Poker family, to you and your family, happy holidays. Also, respect the chop. Until next time, this has been Slow Poker.